Hi guys, this video is going to show you how to install Project ENB. Project ENB is a variation of the ENB mod designed to be used with Project Reality Climates of Tamriel. And I did a video showcasing this mod and you can see it in this link here. Now, if you watched part one of this series and followed the installation video for sharpshooters, this is not going to be a big surprise to you. The, the, the installation for this mod is not that different, but there are a few extra steps. The first and most obvious one is you need to have Climates of Tamriel installed. So if you don't have that installed, download with Manager, do that right now. You're going to need that. You are also going to need... If you go to the Project ENB Nexus page, the file section, there is another of the two main files that is one with the Download with Manager button. That is the data folder for Climates of Tamriel update. Uh, you're going to need that, so download that as well. Once those have downloaded, go along to the Mod tab in Nexus Mod Manager and first of all, activate Project Reality. The little menu will come up and you can decide do you want to make the dungeons darker there is a hardcore setting which i think is the darkest and then there's the hazardous one uh, generally when i'm not using enb this is the one i use or you can leave it as the default experience of course the enb mod itself makes the game slightly darker anyway for interiors again same choice do you want the default vanilla experience from climates of tamriel or do you want one of the various options for the interior. See the video if you want to see the big difference because if you actually make the interiors darker and you have the Project EMB installed, interiors are very dark indeed. I would generally recommend using the default experience for interiors and maybe going with one of the darker settings for, uh, for dungeons if you like things dark and scary. I make a lot of videos of my play and Honestly, they're a little too dark for videos, but for playing, I probably would pick the hazardous setting. And then choose the night setting. Do you want the default experience or do you want to make it a little darker? All the way down to the lowest setting, which is pretty much pitch black. Do remember, you're also installing Project ENB on top of this, and that will... Well, it doesn't always make it darker. If you watch the video for details, sometimes it makes it lighter, but generally, I would suggest not picking the darkest setting. Um, I would pick one a little higher up if I were you. And once you've made your choices, finish and let it do its thing. Once that's finished, go along to the Project ENB data folder for Climates of Tamriel Update 2 and activate that. Now it's going to ask you if you want to overwrite some things. It overwrites more than just Climates of Tamriel. It does overwrite a few other things. For example, as you can see here, the high-res DLC optimized mod that I'm using. I, I clicked yes to all, I didn't notice any problems. For load order, I let boss make the decision, but you should note that the further dark dungeons for enb.esp file has been placed fairly high up. Now, I'm going to take a wild guess that this makes dungeons a little darker, and of course it is possible that if you're using another mod to change the darkness in dungeons, for example, Climates of Tamriel, they may overwrite any changes from that file. I'm not 100% sure, but they may. I actually don't think it matters. I think that's probably what you want. If you're using Climates of Tamriel to make the dungeons darker, I'm not even totally sure you even need that file. It may be a little redundant. Um, if I find out any further details, I will put a little annotation here. So we've got the Nexus mod manager part out of the way and now comes the, the messy part. This is the part where we actually install the ENB and all the settings for it. For that, you're going to need to download manually on the actual ENB settings. The current version is Project ENB Final Edition for Climates of Tamriel V3 underscore 1. Download that manually. You will also need ENB Series V0.119. The link for that is on the Project ENB page, and you should check that just in case that has changed. If the mod author updates the mod, he may also update the version of ENB that it requires. Follow his instructions. That, that would be my, uh, my, my advice. You're going to need to download the ENB series file that comes with that. Right there. So, 
I've got two downloads. One, the ENB series, and I'm going to right click and extract to ENB series Skyrim V0119 as suggested. So I've now got this folder. And I'm going to do the same for the project ENB file as well. Extract to here. So I now have two working folders and I can delete those archives, get rid of them. And of course, I'm also going to need the Skyrim game folder, the folder where you find the tsv.exe file. I say this every time or almost every time. If you cannot find anything with a .exe, don't worry, it's probably marked tesv with nothing at the end of it. That just means it's hiding the .exe from you. A lot of people leave their operating systems doing that. Don't worry, you're in the right place. If you see TESV with that icon and the Skyrim launcher with that icon, you're in the right place. I'm sorry for those of you who know this. I just want to make sure to avoid those questions. Okay, now this is a little bit more complicated than part one because this version of ENB, if I op I've opened up the ENB folder, the ENB series Skyrim 0119 folder, there are two versions. There is the injector version and the wrapper version. I'm going to show you both, but I'm going to start with the wrapper version. This is the same version as last week's video for sharpshooters, and the process is pretty much identical. You're going to need the d3d9.dll. Copy that straight into your games folder right there. I can close that. I don't need anything else from there. So now we're going to open Project ENB, the folder we made, and you'll see a lot of folders in here. For example, the data folder. Ignore that. That is what you have installed using Nexus Mod Manager. This is just a repeat of it, probably from days when that the Nexus Mod Manager version didn't exist. I'm just guessing, but you don't need that. There is then a cinematic version, fantasy version, realistic, and the winter version. The other versions are a little more complicated to install, uh, but feel free to try them out if you want. They are a little bit more complicated, and I am going to be showing you only the realistic version. That's the version I used in the video. Inside the realistic folder, there, is, there are three more folders, main files, optional effects, and performance options. If you want to try these, you can, but again, I'm going to leave that up to you. You are going to have to find out uh, how to do that. I will be covering how to tweak your ENBs in a future video, but for now, I just want to stick with the default setting for that ENB mod. And so I'm just going to go to main files and I want to copy all of these files. I want to copy all of them into my data, uh, sorry, into my game folder, right with the d3d9.dll file. Now I can close that. And that, that is it installed. There is, however, one other step. On the main page for Project EMB, you will find a few settings that you need to change in your skyrimprefs.ini file. Now that file can be found usually, uh, for me, it can be found in documents, my games, Skyrim. Then the Skyrim prefs not any. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to edit with Notepad, but you can edit. Sorry, I'm going to edit with Notepad++. You can edit it with Notepad if you want. Um, I do recommend Notepad++. If you've not installed it, it is it's well worth it, actually. It definitely makes editing things a lot more pleasant. So it's a very powerful editor. So now we're going to make the tweaks. First of all, we have to find them. Uh, most of these will probably already exist in your Skyrim prefs, and they may even be set correctly. I believe mine are actually. Um, oh, go along to the uh, to the web page and select the B float point render targets. The easiest way. Uh, a lot of browsers actually allow you to double click the word and it select it all. Then press Control C or right click and copy. Go back to the editor and press Control F for find. Then paste that into there and find. And it should then take you to the right place. And as you can see for me, it equals one already. And that's what it's supposed to. Do the same for all the other four. And in actual fact, my guess is for most of you, if you're running ultra, the first three probably are already set. I, I think those are set by default for ultra. They're set to one. 
The one that's different is the Eye Blur Deferred Shadow Mask. So I'm going to copy that. Okay, now <laughs> I've already changed mine. I've changed mine to five. I think the default is three. I think the default is, is three. Change that, then press Control S or save if you've made any set changes and close it. And your skyrimprefs.ini is now set correctly. And that is it for the installation. But don't forget, when you get in game, you probably need to change the settings for your brightness under display and brightness. The mod author recommends turning it completely down, and that's what I did for the video, and I think it's perfect. I think it really is. It's bright, very bright, as you can see here. During the day, it is... Try to ignore my shivering horse. It's quite cold here, so... As you can see, even on the lowest brightness in a snowy area like this, still very bright indeed. Colours are great. So I would recommend you do that. But of course, it could depend on your your monitor, and maybe you'll need it a little brighter. Okay. So that's the wrapper version installed. What about the injector version? And, and why would you use it? So what is the difference? Well, the wrapper version uses a file called d3d9.dll. You've copied that into your Skyrim folder. And Skyrim, when it runs, when it loads, checks to see if this file is present, and if so, automatically loads it. And this means your ENB mod is run every time you run Skyrim. You don't need to think about it. Once you've installed it, you just run Skyrim as normal, whether you run it by the launcher, the executable, or if you're using the SKSE loader, it will be running. However, the disadvantage is you can't use any other mods that have the same file. Now, I don't use any such mods, but I do know some mods out there have a file with the same name. These mods vary from stability mods, performance mods, and a variety of others. If you are using such a mod and you have this file already in this folder, obviously the wrapper version is not going to work for you. Doesn't really matter because the injector version works fine. There's a little, a little bit more um, work involved, but not much. Go along to the ENB series Skyrim 0119 folder, the injector version, and the files you're going to need this time are the ENB injector.exe, the INI file that goes along with it, and the ENB series.dll. Those three files you're going to need. Copy them and paste them into the Skyrim game folder. Exactly as you did with the wrapper version, but instead of one file, you're doing it with three files. Okay, so now you can close that folder and go back to the Project ENB Final Edition. Realistic main files. And once again, you're going to need all of those files. Again, copied over to the Skyrim folder. Now, if you, if you are using SKSE, you have one more step. You need to go along to the ENB injector.ini and edit it. Again, I'm going to use Notepad++. And if you're using SKSE, you need to add SKSE launcher. Sorry, it's lo loader, isn't it? Let me, oh God, I need to check. SKSE loader.exe. SKSE loader.exe. You need to add that here. What this is doing is it's telling it if you run any of these programs, load the ENB. Okay, so you're going to need that. Control S to save or save from the menu and close. There is, the, it, running the game is not that hard, but there is an extra step from now on. From now on, you will need to run the ENB injector, double click it, and you get this. Now you can hide it tray or you can leave it like that, it doesn't matter. And now, when I run the game SKSE, it will load the ENB mod. And there you go. Once again, you get the little message up in the top right hand, uh, left hand corner, excuse me, top left hand corner telling you the ENB mod is loaded. And everything else is the same. 
everything else is the same. You still need to change the brightness settings in game and don't forget you also need to change your sky skyrim prefs.ini file the exact same ini tweaks that you did for the wrapper version you need to do for the injector version it apart from apart from these three files the enb injector xe and ini and the enb series dll those are the only real differences those three files instead of the d3d9.dll Okay guys, I hope the video was helpful and I hope you enjoy this mod if you give it a try. I will see you guys next time and as always, you know the drill. Have fun.